Thank you so much. Um, we're, we're sorry that Pat was going to be here this weekend, but she got ill, unfortunately, so she couldn't make it. She so. sends all her best to all of you and her apologies yes. for not being able to make it. Let's have a shout out to Pat. Thanks. Get well, get well. Yeah, so uh, thank you all. Were any of you at the screening last night? A lot of fun. You bunch of degenerates. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And, and, okay, so are you all hung over, you know, from the experience? Yeah, yeah. And, and the people next to you who didn't go, you missed a real fun evening, I must say. It's true, right? Yeah, just tell them how much fun they had. Uh, okay. All well, right. actually, something else to mention, Barry. We yeah. also have FSCW, which takes place right here. Well, which fuck is you too. Oh, that wrestling thing I did last Hello. yesterday. Did you say FUCKW? No, it's called FSCW. Oh. Uh. I'm a lady. I'm not going to curse during this panel. So we have a wrestling event, and Barry actually made his wrestling debut last night. Was anyone here to see that? That was, was so. Was anybody there? Was wait, anybody wait, wait, there? wait, Barry. Holy crap. What are you oh my gosh. This is oh. our current oh. reigning and defending. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Stay away. Stay. Stay. Barry, Who's be that? careful. This is our reigning and defending toxic champion. This means someone can win this championship at oh. any time, 24-7. Wait. Take him out. Oh my gosh, Barry has his underwear. We have a referee. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Make the count, ref. Make the count. Oh. He tapped. Ring the bell! Ladies and gentlemen, your new Toxic Adventure champion, Barry Boswell! <laughs> With the assist from Nell, she's sweeping Toxie off the stage. Thank you, Nell. Oh my gosh. Um, Trying to steal our thunder. Oh. Gee, dolly. Wow, are you sure? Well, that's one way to start a panel. Wow. Now, where were we? Before we were so rudely interrupted. Who was that freak? I'm exhausted. My God. Nowhere's safe now. <clears throat> I, hope, I hope I never have to do that again. <laughs> yeah. So before we get to questions from the audience, obviously, Rocky Horror Picture Show revolutionized the shadow cast, and people perform it all over. Like you said, it was here last night. Out of curiosity, what would be a movie that you would like to see be done as a shadow cast, and what do you think would be a good prop? Megaforce! Yes! I, I, has, who's seen Megaforce here? 1983 or something? Two, 1982, Thank right? Thank you. I, I had very Gibb hair. Yeah, it was very 80s, very 80s. I, I would say Megaforce. And I would say... Um, the, uh, in my instance, the, uh, the gold lame, no, was it a, a lame suit or something that showed everything? Yeah, yeah. Well, come to my table and I'll show you all the pictures <laughs> on top of it and underneath it. <clears throat> what about you now? Well, the film I think would be great is already performed in front of with a shadow cast and that's The Sound of Music. Yes. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that, actually, because I, I think that's so interesting that it really can be, like, any musical. Have you ever seen props, though? You are, yes, absolutely. I've been to one of their events with all the props. But here's the deal. It just doesn't work as well as Rocky Horror because, you know, there's no cross-dressing. There's no sex. There's no rock and roll. So, really, what other film brings as much to the party as Rocky Horror? Nothing. No, actually. <laughs> Much as I love shock treatment, it, there's something about there's something a little racier yeah. about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Wouldn't you agree? When yeah. it comes to <laughs> performing, yeah. And if there are no sequins. Well, there's that black dress, but nothing compared to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Awesome. I think we'd all agree. So, if it's okay with you guys, we're going to take some questions from the audience. I kindly ask just one question per person, and no requests, only questions. Um, my question is, how does it feel to have the Rocky Horror Picture Show be such, and continue to be such a cult classic? Uh, 
d right. Well, it feels absolutely marvellous. Yeah. I can't... I mean, we are so thrilled that so many of you have gotten such a kick out of the film, not to mention that it has meant so much to you in so many ways, and especially when it helps people that feel somewhat isolated in themselves or regardless of where they live, what their sexuality is, what their personal temperament's like, that they have met other people through the film or identified with characters in the film or become parts of members of a shadow cast or just going to midnight screenings. We're so very lucky and thrilled to be part of something that's had that effect on so many people. And so many generations. I mean, how old are you? I'm 11 currently. You're 11. And <laughs> when did you first see this movie? I haven't actually. You haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> Darling. Good. I mean, and would I, you, when wait you a few leave years, here, to actually tomorrow I want you to go out and buy your first pair of fishnets. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. get and start practicing in your mother's high heels, because you've got a big future ahead of your kid. <laughs> Thanks for the question. All right, thank you. Right. I was 11. It's the right age. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. You oh were boy. six. You were six. Excellent parents. Can we hear five? Any, was anyone five? Anyone five? We got a couple fives. Four. Thank, four. Thank your parents for that wonderful parenting. Never Are they out of young. jail yet? Your parents have they finally gotten out of jail for six? No. All right. Hello. Oh, hi, my name is Matt. Um, I know Mel is me. Hi. Your asshole is. Two T's. Thank you. Um, my question is actually for Nell, though, and it's a non Rocky Horror Picture okay, uh, question. Um, could, could you share some of your memories about working on the movie Litzomania? Listomania? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, what's this? Listomania. Was that a movie? Yeah, it's about a guy <laughs> called List, Franz List. You okay. may have heard of him. Okay, yes. Directed by Ken Russell. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. And I had one short scene with Roger Daltrey and Ringo Starr. Not bad for a short scene. Really good. Okay. Really. I have one regret about my scene. I didn't even bother to wash my hair for my scene with them. No. Yes. And in the stills, I just don't look great. But anyway. Um, Would anybody else have noticed this, though, or just you? Me. Okay. I just feel like that sort of detail you like to have, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Behind the scenes, behind the scenes. But anyway, Roger Daltrey had the torso of a god. <laughs> Oh, my God. So I'm in bed with him. Oh. Yeah, and I'm thinking... And then you went to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And nice. I thought, oh, my God. I've never slept with someone I've acted with before. Well, that's, I was very young at the time. But this could be my moment. Uh -huh. And so, and then Ringo Starr appears as the Pope in our bedroom. Yes. And... Uh, so then we go to lunch and I'm thinking this could be the beginning of something between, you know, me and Roger. And sure. the, literally while we're at lunch, the first thing he tells us is his wife had given birth to, I think, their first child that very day. <laughs> so it was very short relationship. Um, yeah. And Ringo, did you have a relationship with Ringo? Ringo was divine and, uh, well, you know how amusing all those Beatles are. Anyway, they're all, both of them were heaven. Oh, okay. wonderful. So that's my memory. Wow. Thank you. Hope I didn't bang on too long about that. I slept with Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> I slept with Ringo. Right. Hank here. Hi, guys. Hey, and uh, first off, uh, to Kid Cadet, uh, congrats on your wedding recently. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, my question is for uh, both of you, um, uh, Barry and Nell. Yeah. Given the uh, recent popularity of escape rooms, don't worry, I know where I'm going here. Uh, with the combination of uh, the escape room and the, uh, um, how would you feel if there was a Rocky Horror themed escape room? It's similar in, in tone to another Richard O'Brien involved uh, franchise, The Crystal Maze. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> escape I, rooms are kind of like. Escape room, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it would have to be something with sex, right, to get out of it? <laughs> I mean, it's Maybe. With, with Rocky Horror. I mean, it's something. Um, what would you do to get out of this? Well, I know you've never <laughs> escaped from any room. You, you, if there's sex involved, right? Okay. Not only a fire gets me out of a room. Uh huh. Yeah. What about like, 
you have to like go through a wall like Dr. Scott goes through the wall in order yes. to escape something oh, that like would that. Be cool. That oh. sounds fabulous. Or uh, use those uh, knobs that uh, That's like the first the first and perhaps the only twilight zone I've ever seen. Really? When someone went through the wall, I was a, a wee lass when I saw it and it, it's left a you know etched in my memory is that thing of disappearing through a wall so I like the idea of that. Cool. So there but, you go. But That's you know the Dr. Scott scene where he comes through the wall? Yes. That that was all a last minute deal because they <clears throat> that day they thought they thought well we've got to get we've got to get him upstairs to your room yeah. right and they they never m made any stairs or anything for him so <laughs> they they <laughs> broke a hole in the wall and said well we'll just have him bash through this wall just like the Kool-Aid <laughs> man and it was the last it was like a last minute thing because they forgot how to get him upstairs yeah okay. it was and they forgot to build another set yeah that's right <laughs> well they couldn't afford another of course, set of course right Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Good. Hi, my name is Sherilyn. Um, my favorite song from the entire thing is Rose Tint My World. I was wondering if you guys had a favorite. Once in a while, <laughs> she don't want to know you. <laughs> speaking on the telephone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's enough out of that. Thank you, John. And once in your life, yeah. she don't um, want to call you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's enough treasure, that's lovely. Well, naturally, the time warp, because I get my big, fantastic oh my dance And you do know that the time warp was written for me, don't you? Yes. It was written well, for you. Yes, because yeah. Richard found out I could tap dance, so he thought, well, I better throw in a uh, tap dancing number. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So that's the story of that. Now, how did they know that you tap danced? Because when I, I was working in a soda jerk, I was a soda jerk in a, you know, ice cream cafe, or cafe called Smalls in Knightsbridge, London. And they came in and, and I tap danced up to the table. They <laughs> being Jim Sharman, Richard O'Brien and Richard Hartley. That's the director, writer and musical director. And that's one way to show people what you can do. You just tap on dance up to the table as a waitress. They and I was dressed in, I was dressed as Ruby Keeler and playing uh, 1930s music at the time. Were you really one of the first punk people thing? I wasn't a punk. You weren't a punk. What were I, you? I wasn't a punk. I've always just been me. Uh huh. And, but at the same time, I used to frequent Vivian Westwood's shop in the World's End at the end of King's Road in Chelsea, in London. And that is where punk began in a way, she, yeah. the, the clothes that she made. So I knew those punks. I was on that famous, infamous um, little boat trip with the Sex Pistols. I was probably the only person that was bored out of my mind and got off at the first stop. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but I was never actually a punk, except I did start dyeing my hair when, in about 1973, which was, I was one of the first people to do yeah, that. Yeah. Punk was a bit later than that. Anyway, but I, I've never been a punk. I've just been me. Oh, nice. Mm. Nice. Don't ever change. Well, Thank you. I don't Thank follow you. fashion, and I suggest you don't follow fashion either. Just dress how you like and what becomes a legend most. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's your question? How are, how are you doing, Barry and Nell? Um, my name is Katrina. Last year, actually, Nell, your song was uh, done at my wedding. We danced to the Time Warp. It was the one line dance I wanted to have. It was fun and fabulous. But my question to you Did guys, you dance with your father? No, well, he Did didn't you show know me the it. video? Someone showed me the video of them dancing. That wasn't me. That but, wasn't you. But okay. It was super fun. Everybody came out and danced it, even the people who didn't know about it. We were like, the instructions are right in there. So. <laughs> My question to both of you, actually, is uh, Rocky Horror is filled with so many iconic scenes. What was the scene that you auditioned to? Oh, I didn't audition. Oh, I didn't, didn't audition either. No, darling. No, you I... just sleep with the director. Wow. Don't you know that? No. You slept with the director? Of course. Oh, I slept with Tim. <laughs> that was my audition. The you audition born scene. born yesterday. Yeah, the, the audition scene behind the curtain, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I passed. Oh, we're learning so much. All right. Hi, uh, my name's John. I have a question for Barry Boswick. Okay. Um, you, uh, there's a scene uh, where you and Susan Sarandon are driving through the rain, 
yes. to get to the castle and their motorcycle is passing you. Were you actually driving in the rain when they filmed that? Was that all real driving or was it? Uh... No, I think we were in a car and it was in one place and they were shaking it. And then they we had a hose and they were, sh you know, sprinkling water on the windshield. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and the guys were driving by, uh, on a couple of stunt guys. It was, um, uh, it was a very low budget movie. <laughs> Did I tell you well, that? You, I you mean, could've, could've... normally they would have hooked us onto a trailer and dragged us through the woods, you know, and, yeah. and real rain. But no, we had a, I think they, we were up against a house somewhere and they stole a hose <laughs> from the house and well, then just I've, started going like, I've if you look the, at it. I've seen know. the movie so many times, it yeah. looks real. I mean, I couldn't tell that you weren't really driving. Show the business. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it looks real. <laughs> Hi, I've got a question for uh, Barry. I was wondering, how you got involved with Phineas and Ferb, because um, Richard is the father, so I was wondering if uh, he got you into the show or if you just um, got into the show by yourself. Well, the creator of Phineas and Ferb is a big Rocky Horror fan, and uh, he would cast any of the Rocky Horror people or anybody associ uh, associated with it, uh, if he could, in the series. And I think he had Richard O'Brien playing the father, right? Mm -hmm. And he wanted me, finally, I guess, to play uh, Grandpa Clyde. And I had a couple of songs, and uh, we did four or five episodes. And then they did the film. And I said to him, would you put me in the film? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So I, I, I did four or five episodes as Grandpa Clyde. And I think, because Grandpa Clyde ha had dementia. Basically, he was just, and so I think they sort of ran out of things for him to do. I don't know how you could have run out of something to do, you know, with a guy with dementia. I mean, he, I could have done anything. But I did do his, uh, Swampy is his name, the guy who writes it. And he did another series now, right? Doesn't he have um, a... Milo Murphy's Law. That's right. And I did an episode of that, Milo. Yeah, that, th those guys are very clever. I must say, I never understood what uh, that, that series was about. You know, and the, the ch children have to explain it to me, you know, <laughs> about the fantasy of it and this and that. And there's a, what is that, a little chipmunk or something? Or is there something in it? With it? Platypus. A platypus? <laughs> See, there you go. I didn't know that. Platypus? There's a platypus in it, and I didn't know why. A real platypus? Well, a cartoon platypus. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know when the first platypus was discovered in Australia, by someone in the first fleet, probably Charles Darwin. Was he in the first fleet or was that the second? Anyway, they saw a platypus and I was like, and they would send, they sent the dead platypus. Well, they probably tried to keep it alive on the boat, but that's, you know, it took about 12 months to get from Australia back to England. And when that platypus arrived back in England, the scientists looked at it and they went, if they think that we're going to believe that that is one animal, they're kidding. <laughs> it's obviously a duck, an otter, and something, I can't remember what they thought the tail was part of, but they did not believe that that was one animal. They thought it was some kind of joke. That's interesting. Isn't that great? Yeah, I, and it's we've never had the platypus. But discussion. also, what, is, what kind of a name is a platypus? <laughs> hey, puss, 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 platypus. I mean, come on, that's a very <laughs> unusual name. And you don't see them often at all, platypus. You don't? I've never seen a platypus in the wild. They don't exist. <laughs> and you'd think they'd have plats. Watch Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> You'll get the platypus. Okay. You'll get it overload. It's a great name. Thank you. And don't they lay eggs? Pardon? Don't, don't put... Yes, I think they're the only... Are they the only... There's one people other. that lays eggs. Yeah, I think there's... I think you're right. Hello. Hello, my name is Adam. Nice to meet you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> you, um, called her, you called her a lady? Oh. Um, hello, ma'am. How are you? <laughs> um, my question is, and you probably get this asked a lot, what was the most funniest, embarrassing moment behind the scenes of the Rocky Horror Picture Show that comes to mind? What outlandishly awesome thing happened? Oh, I think that's when I made a pass at you and you turned me down. 
Was oh. that? I turned you down. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It was embarrassing. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's yeah. my hotel room key right yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, because apparently he and Pat had already gotten thick. So I wasn't aware of that. Anyway, he gave me the cold shoulder. That was my most embarrassing moment. Oh, Yours? No. Wow. Oh. Mine was. Uh, I'll tell you, ma'am. When we were when we were getting our full body casts done, you know, back in those days, they actually had to like lather you down with uh, Vaseline, you know, all over you, and then they put this wrap what? you and all that. Yeah. Oh wow. And uh, and I was standing there, and uh, Susan Sarandon was standing next to me, and we were getting lathered up, you know. Uh oh, um, I can see where this is going. <laughs> <coughs> That's the end of that conversation right there. <laughs> no, so some, some uh, guy who works in the prop department was sitting there lathering Susan up, and she was naked from the waist up. And he's like slathering her with, with uh, Vaseline all over her. <laughs> you know? And over I her got, what? <laughs> 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 And I got very I think breasts jealous. is the word that you're looking for. Carry on. <laughs> and what great breasts she has. She ha what, what, yeah. Great yeah. breasts. And that, that was the most embarrassing moment because I told him to get his hands off of her. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because she was mine. She was my <laughs> Janet. She was my slut. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is William. I got a question for Barry. Yep. Um, what is your opinion of shock treatment and uh, Cliff D. Young's portrayal of Brad Majors? What, what movie is that, Shock Treatment? I, yeah, I, I never heard of it. Never. Oh, come on. That's a joke. Uh, shock Treatment. I, you know, I love Shock Treatment because of you guys, you know, being in it. Right. Well, you think I meant that? I did mean that. But I didn't understand the movie when it first came out. It was so, yeah. it was so ahead of you its time. You needed to see the Truman Show to understand shock treatment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but it was very but ahead of its time, as everything that uh, Richard, Richard O'Brien and Jim yeah. Sharman did together. Yeah, and uh, I, I didn't, I was never asked to be in it because I think they asked Susan first, and she apparently wanted too much money, so they decided to cast both. Well, they parts. asked Tim to be in it too, and Tim? I guess Tim. Wanted too much money. Oh, They've I would have done it for it. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I did do it for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, go go visit it again. I think it's a right now. You'd get it and you'd really enjoy it. And there's some wonderful music in it, right? Oh, and they just did a, a stage version of it, didn't yeah. they? No, the music's fabulous in it. Yeah, they just did a stage version in London last year or so. Yes. And, which was quite popular. Very popular, and it was to transfer to the West End, oh. but Richard O'Brien didn't want it to. Oh, because Rocky Horror was... Because Rocky Horror was on, and he thought there'd be a conflict, but I don't think there's any conflict. They're both fabulous. But he wrote them both. What I know. It? Why wouldn't he just double his money? I don't that, get it. I don't, I don't get it either. But anyway, he got, it was his decision. Uh, but uh, it was very unfortunate because everyone adored. It was a very much a reboot of Shock Treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had come to me to play in it. Uh, do what part? The. Uh, uh, I know the. I don't know his character. Yeah, what character? Yeah, and then and then they they just never called me back. <laughs> I didn't. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know. I I, I, because Tim wasn't in it, so I had nobody to sleep with that's to get nice. the part. <laughs> you know, so that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Jamie. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank you. Um, mine's an easy question. Did y'all take anything home from set on Rocky Horror Picture Show? Drugs. Drugs? Oh. Yeah. I know you didn't take him home, yeah. so. Yeah, the crabs I took home. <laughs> yeah. Right. That was from one of the Transylvanians, right? No, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you know, they didn't let us take anything. Did you get anything? You didn't get, did you get a boa or something? I got Nothing, master. Nothing. Yeah. yeah, I got nothing, master. No, can you imagine? Had we known, I'd have taken the whole goddamn outfit. <laughs> I mean, I'd yeah. have taken every outfit I had. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Uh, sadly not. We were yeah. living in, an, in, in more innocent times. <laughs> no. I wish I had those size 12 high but heels. But by the way, somebody did take my corset. And yeah, and I know who took it. And I'm thrilled she took it. 
because we were all played. She didn't work. She wasn't in the film. She was behind the scenes. She took my corset. Well, you may have seen it and, uh, and sold it. And she sold it years ago and put an extension on her house oh with God. the money she made for it, okay? Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting, yeah? Oh. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you. But I do have the bra I wore in the Rocky Horror show, the original show. I do have that. And you know what I just found? My script for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I have the script for the Rocky Horror Show and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And, Pretty and amazing. you don't have the bra from the movie? Oh, that's right. You didn't wear a bra that's in the right. movie. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm Matt. Hi. Um, Hi, Matt. Sorry, I'm really close. Uh, so my question is, did you have a scene that you really liked making that you had kind of had really a lot of fun making? Was there a certain scene that you did that just kind of stood out that you were like, this is the best scene just because I had so much fun doing this with this person or that person? or The time or warp, darling. Of course. Tap dancing, <laughs> starring, all attention on me, cameras, mm -hmm. the course. lot. End of, of story. You? Oh, I just stood there and watched you be brilliant Thank you, uh, for the time warp. Yeah. But your, no. What was your favorite scene? Was that sex um, with you had sex with a lot of people in that movie? I don't. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, um, what was my favorite scene? Probably uh, when I sang. Once in a while, <laughs> she don't want to call you, <laughs> and then they cut it from yeah. the movie. Yeah. Once in your You'll life. You'll never get over that. You'll yeah, never get over that. That's enough. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Hey. I'm Tiff, and my question is for you. Besides this, the dinner room, dining room scene, were there any other scenes that were really um, improv? Did we improv? I didn't improv no, the, like. well, well, there was... When you refer to the dining room scene well, being improv, that's because we weren't told that the when the tablecloth was ripped off, there was going to be the corpse of Eddie oh, underneath. Oh, yeah. So there was that magic moment. But also, on about the third take, when you were being so dull and I was taking your clothes off, um, the director, Jim Sharman, whispered to me, this time when you do it, just throw your, the clothes in his face. So I did that. Did and that, you? Yeah, that's why I do that. I thought just because you didn't like me. No. That too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was improvised, sort of. He didn't yeah. know I was going to do it. Yeah. No, I didn't. I don't think I. You know, the, the, the movie was directed so specifically because of the style of it. You know, we all had to be on the same page uh, uh, in terms of slightly over the top acting, but not so bad that it looked like really we were bad actors. And, um, but wait a minute, can, sorry, <laughs> can I just say about that? Yeah. Because you say that, but the great thing is, because we weren't directed like that, we would just do our own thing because we'd already done it in the, in the play. Yeah. But what worked so well is that you and Susan came in and fitted in seamlessly on exactly the right note. Oh. Because I remember at the time, it was like, particularly with Susan, it's like she's not doing anything. Uh -huh. She appeared not to do anything, but of course that was perfect that you were both on this, you were on your plane, uh -huh. and we were on our loony plane. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you, you got that, you nailed it. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Thank you. And what, what I think, any, any like production that I've seen since then, it just becomes so over the top, you know, it's like, oh, hey, 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 one of these kind of performances. And there was, it gets wrong. Yeah. It gets all wrong. Because you have to be the real deal. Yeah. Otherwise, it makes us look ludicrous yeah. if you were playing, you know, yeah. yeah no, you true. were the straight guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't make fun of yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, you were our straight men. Yeah, I'm yeah. a straight man. I, yeah. I was a straight man. That's right. And in fact, in professional productions, when you see Brad trying to play goof, a goofball, it yep. never works. Never works. Brad and Janet have to be give film perfect straight performances. Yeah, that's true. Janet's hard because she has to have that undercurrent of sexuality but, from the beginning all the way through. And well, you have I to think see it has to. I think you have to see it develop. I yeah. don't think you should see it in the beginning. 
And you have to see a little bit in her eyes. I think, you, I think you have to see it, you know, develop. Yeah, yeah. she really progresses throughout the movie. Yeah. yeah. The first moment is about, have you got any tattoos? When, when you know, uh -huh. Frank says, do you have any tattoos? And she giggles. Yes. That's the first moment I believe uh -huh. you get that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, you are asking fantastic questions, audience. I yes. think these are, these are the best questions we've ever been asked. It's, it's true. I've never learned more about platypuses in my life. <laughs> really. Hi, I'm Lee. Hi. Um, Don't feel any pressure. What's your question? <laughs> no pressure. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I was wondering, uh, did, when you signed on for the project, did you have any idea that it would become as much of a sensation as it is? Absolutely. I only work in things that are going to be, you know, cults for 30 years, <laughs> oh, 40 yes, years, absolutely. right? Oh, yeah, 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 no. Uh, is that by choice? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. make the it long the haul. sensation. <laughs> you make it the sensation. Well, thank you. What did she say? What did you say, darling? She said, what? you make it the sensation. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I know I should put hearing aids. Uh, you've been telling me that for years, I know. Oh, we made a sensation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Have a great day. Bye. I would like to credit the director, Jim Sharman, with the casting, which is just an underestimated contribution. I'm not yeah. saying that I'm a great singer, dancer, or actress, but I think that the, each character in the film brings their own element, yeah. which is what helps make the film what it is. Of course, Richard's brilliant writing and songwriting uh, huge. It's true. It's true. It's true. And also, Jim Sharman's direction, that is possibly invisible to you, but is one of the major reasons the film is a cult. Richard O'Brien's writing, the costumes by Sue Blaine, the sets by Brian Thompson, the musical direction by Richard Hartley, all those things really contributed to why we're all sitting here 485 years later. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. You're absolutely right. Hi. Hi. The scene after you all get turned into statues, when Columbia comes down, and she, she like pulls her shirt. Was that slit there on purpose? It's in oh, my tell contract. Her the truth. Tell her the truth. Yeah, I only work with slits that at some point I get to expose a nipple. Look yeah. at all my movies. Yeah. You'll see. Yeah. I mean, I thought I knew that. Check me out on Do the Swim on YouTube. You know. Yeah. No, it's in the contract. And I always make it look like it wasn't planned, but it's there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I just would, the bustier, I would just pull it down a little bit, but nobody was interested in mine. What about his gams, yeah, his no, legs? <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Elena, and I would tell you my question. Do you feel lucky because after the movie, do you feel lucky or you just feel embarrassed? I'm lucky. <laughs> You're, You're lucky. lucky. We're all lucky. <laughs> uh, if Pat were here, how did she so, just was? I don't know if you heard the second half of her question, but she wanted to know if you felt lucky or embarrassed. Oh, embarrassed? Was that the second half? Okay. No. Darling, I, I've never been embarrassed in my whole life. Yeah. What's to be embarrassed about? No, you can't be. No. You can't be embarrassed and be Don't an Don't be embarrassed. He, the important thing in life is to be kind. Mm -hmm. And don't dream it, be it, but be kind to one another. That's the most important thing. Right. Good question. But you have to be kind to yourself, first That's of all, true. I think. And then you, it'll go out into yeah. the world. There you go. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, darling. And, and your Bye -bye. mother's done wonderfully bringing you here today and thank bringing you. you up on the Rocky Horror Picture thank Show. You. And you've I seen... see you as a potential Columbia myself, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Yes. And you, you, you've obviously seen the movie over 50 times, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, the little girl. She's yeah. seen it over 50 yeah. times. Okay, good. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you, darling. See you later. Also, oh, you have a question. My question is, how did it feel to actually work with Meatloaf and Tim Curry? 
You make it sound like something I ordered for dinner last night. I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't. Same thing. Yeah, I wasn't sure should I just they, have the meatloaf like, or have the meatloaf as a starter and then the Tim Curry. That's meaning funny, like, yeah. were they um, a handful? A handful? No. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. They were dream to work yeah. with. Yeah. Both of them, yes. Everybody was a dream. Well, you were a bit of a diva. No, that's not. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you remember any of the shooting of this, or were you just stoned the whole time? I remember it all. Do you? I do, actually. Uh, yeah. I don't. Okay. <laughs> but thank I'll tell you. you who remembers everything is Pat Quinn. Oh, oh yeah. she, I wish she was here. She could yeah. entertain she you with stories. She has got incredible stories. Yeah, yeah. she does. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the Transylvanians, on the other hand, were stoned the whole time, right? <laughs> Were they? Yes, I, apparently there was like a if little... If I was a Transylvanian, I would have been stoned the whole oh, time. Oh, of course. I mean, what a, imagine having to... We got to do all the fun stuff, yeah. and they just had to appear en masse. I feel badly for them. Oh, uh, well... But at least they were part of an iconic movie. Yeah, yeah. And they were all great, too. They were wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So we have about ten minutes left, if you guys want to try to get through the rest of these questions. Uh, we also did the time warp at our wedding 36 years ago, and it gave us one well of our done. favorite grandma memories. Because are you still are you still married? Yeah, he's right here. There you go. Congratulations. There we go. 36. Um, as everybody came to the floor, grandma looked up and she said, "Was it the cake?" Uh. <laughs> so my question is, bringing in the elders, because uh, the movie goes back a ways. Any of your elders, whether they were associates or parents or whatever, how did they react to the movie when it came out? Well, my mother adored it. Yeah. Yeah. My father loved the fact And that my father. My father was alive yeah. then, yeah. My father loved the fact that when he went to Rotary, he was part of Rotary, yeah. and they would say, uh, they would say, uh, you were uh, asshole's father. <laughs> and it, literally, he would have to pay a fine for almost every Rotary meeting he went to, there's something with Rotary is that if you, you know, if they find something like that, you have to pay a certain amount of money. So it almost broke him <coughs> being Thank asshole's father. Thank you for years father. of pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Gwen. Um, my question for you guys is, for me, being a part of a shadow cast and knowing both of your parts fairly well, um, how, what part, what, do you think it's overlooked, or what would you prefer shadow casts did better with your roles? I think they should say less. I, not the shadow cast, but I think the audience is now saying too much. Yeah, yeah. But that's half the fun. Yeah, and I well, think it's a little it too a, rude. It's too rude. Yeah, it used to be, they used to say less, and it was a lot wittier. Yeah. Always yeah. remember, less is more. Right. And here's another one, murder your darlings. I'm not referring to the family members that you're not interested in. No, but you might love something, but sometimes if you do without it, like your song, it had to be murdered from the film. <laughs> Once in a while, <laughs> you don't Yeah, you have to cut me. that. I mean, for, when Tim Curry was in Spamalot, he said that in rehearsal, Mike Nichols' favorite song, which I think, I don't know if Tim said it, but anyway, sang it, but Mike Nichols' favorite song in the film, he cut, I mean, in the, show, in, the t in the Broadway show, he cut because the show as a whole worked better without that song. Yeah. So that's an example of murdering your darlings. It's your darling, but you gotta kill it because the thing as a whole works better without it. Yeah. Okay. It's true. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hey, I'm Kirk, and my wife and I had the pleasure of going to Oakley Court this past year. And my thought, my thought to you or question is, have you been back to Oakley Court since the film? And what did you think about filming the the picture there? You've been back. Have you been back no, to Oakley Court? No, I never go back. Oh, I never go yeah, back. Yeah, I no. always look forward. Yeah, I understand that. To I lunch. Yeah. Oakley Court, when we were shooting there, they, there was nothing, the roof, they had taken all the lead off the roof, right? Because they were trying to tear it down. 
And, uh, People uh, steal the lead for money. They stole That's the lead. That's a big thing in England. And I stole a few things also from Oakley Court. Very smart. So you did take something away, you see. I did. Yeah. I, I, I walked up to the third floor and I stole a, uh, a shower head, one of those big, you know, sunflower shower heads. Yeah. Yeah. It's called roses. The roses, they the call ro roses? It's called yeah. the rose, yeah. the head But we of the weren't supposed to go up the stairs because it was, it was condemned, yeah. you know. We were lucky that we survived working in that environment because there was no heat, the rain was coming through the roof, and they had these big space heaters. And yeah. um, Susan so the, got... That, that's a great combination for a, a film like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, it was great. Condemned, yeah. space heaters, <laughs> yeah. holes in the roof. Let's do the show right here. Right. Well, but that's how you guys did it originally in yes. a small theater with that's how many seats? Right. How 60. many seats? 60. How many? 60? Yeah. And it was just like a little garage kind of I thing. I know. It was brilliant. Thank you. It was brilliant. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, my name is Jeremy. My question is for Barry. Thank you, John. If a stranger calls you an asshole in your day-to-day -day life, do you think they're a fan, or do you think you're just being an asshole? Well, it has to do, <laughs> it has to do with the, the context. If it's on the street and somebody says, hey, asshole, I go, hi, how are you? And if I'm at my house and my wife says, hey, asshole, no, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. So it's context. Life is context, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're such an asshole. <laughs> oh. My name is Ashley. Um, my question is, the plot's a little over the, all over the place. Did you ever question the plot while the movie was being made? Did you say the plot's all over the place? It's a little all over the place. For what, Darling, Rocky Horror? What yeah. drug were you on when you saw the film? The <laughs> I think it's very straightforward. Oh, I do too, yeah. I mean, what, the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah, because like, they go to bed and then they eat dinner afterwards. And like, some stuff just doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, do you know why? There was, a, there was a song cut from it. <laughs> Once in a while, you don't have to call me. Speaking on. Okay, that's the last time I'll refer to that. I got it four times in today, and that was a brilliant, I thought, but right now I'm gonna quit it. <laughs> Once in a while, you don't have to call me. Uh, the question is, and the answer is, we didn't think, I think, that it, that it wandered at all, you know. Um, it I often have sex and then have dinner, you, you know? Yeah. To me, yeah. that's quite normal. <laughs> yes, it's, it's true, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right, so we have to literally rapid fire through these last, we have like two minutes okay, left. Okay, these are our last yep. Bring those wrestlers out again, will you please? <laughs> oh, no, no sorry, all right, hang on. Hi, I'm Alex. Um, I have a question about the big wall of meatloaf. Um, how was that done, and what happened to it after the movie? Of the what? Wall the wall, meatloaf. the freezer. Oh, the no, freezer. No, no, the, the wall, like where in your bedroom. Oh. Oh, oh brilliant. Oh that, was, oh, that was done by the set director, and sadly, it's not in my bedroom at home. Oh. It went I the way it in of all sets. At home. Great. <laughs> Every yeah. time I see this movie, I see something different in that bedroom. There's so many brilliant props yes. and, and set that dressing. Was that was all Brian Thompson, the brilliant set designer. And he also put things from my bedroom into that bedroom. Oh, did he? Yeah. What? Photographs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A towel, a beach towel with a girl with a ball. Um, well, he always loved the Mona Lisa. That's why the Mona Lisa yeah. is images yeah. in the film. Anyway... Various, just little things that you'd have to really look for yeah. were from my apartment. Yeah. And in fact, the whole movie, if you, that, it, <laughs> it'll keep you interested. You could find different things every time you see the movie. Like That's a Simpsons true. episode. It's yeah. wonderful. Right. Yeah. The only thing you won't find. <laughs> <laughs> see, okay, I told you I you wouldn't darling. do it, but I we have to. We better hurry this up because we're going to get I'm thrown sorry. off. Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Crystal, and I MC Rocky Horror every year in Washington, North Carolina. Um, yay! Um, my question's real quick. Uh, I know the remake of Rocky Horror that had Laverne Cox in it uh, met, met mixed reviews. Um, yeah, it obviously. was crap. Oh, stop it. It was yeah, not. It was crap. But the really cool thing was it gave a nod to all us fans that have watched it and loved it. You know, did the audience participation add-in. 
I was wondering what you guys really thought of it and the add-in with the audience participation. You know, how you felt about it? It was crap. Oh, stop uh, it. <laughs> I thought some of the performances were really wonderful. I, 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 but it, you know, it's, it's a dark little musical, you know, and there's some themes in it that they couldn't really explore, I yeah. thought, because it was for general audience and was on television. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that was kind of uh, you know, that was my only, my only problem with it. It got too glitzy, too big, you know. But there were some really great performances in it, I thought. Totally. And then most of it was crap! And they didn't have your song in it. No, uh, right. <laughs> what did you think? Did you see it? I've never seen it. Oh, I see, I saw it on an airplane. And I couldn't walk out. I, I, I tried, <laughs> but they, they, I couldn't open the door of... The Laverne airplane. Cox was good. Yeah, okay. Was good. Thank you. But thank you. All right, we literally have one minute left, so. Okay. Uh, Barry, uh, yeah. almost every shadow cast Brad always tries to do the split. The split. How, how could you do like a full split without getting injured? Were you like a dancer uh, beforehand, or uh, you like really get little limbered up and stuff? Uh, it's yoga. It's all yoga. If anybody knows yoga, I mean, you, it's yoga. It's all yoga. Flexibility. Flexibility. Flexibility, ah. yoga, and uh, would you please get out of the way? There's a naked woman behind you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Janet! Now you're my Janet. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, I'm the last question, but uh, I know you guys have hosted a ton of Shadowcast, and I know you've been to it, but what's your favorite callback? Hmm. What's your favorite callback? <laughs> I can't remember. I don't Isn't remember. That terrible. That? Oh, oh. Uh, you know what, I think my favorite is the first one that was ever yelled at the screen. And it was during the, uh, the, the, the rainstorm. The rain, yeah, what was the, that? That's what that, was, that, that was somebody yelled out, uh, buy an umbrella, you cheap bitch. <laughs> when we had the newspaper over our head. Yeah, that was, that's my favorite. Thank you, and yeah. keep dressing that way, and please. Everybody, thank You're you. You're very brave. Thank you so much for coming. Before we let you go, and may I add, thank you I, all. Well, well, anyone that okay. wants to come to our okay. to our desk, I have to leave early for the airport. So if you want, if you'd like to meet me or, you know, get a photo or whatever you'd like, please come to my desk now because I'd love to see you and talk to you. 